is uh, Mr. Koko. Um, today we are continuing with uh, urinalysis. So urinalysis. Then last time we talked about uh, physical properties. Then today we are looking at chemical properties. So, um, so physical properties, since we looked at it, I'm going to remove it. Then we remain with chemical. So chemical, you cannot see with your eyes, but you use what we call reagents. Reagents, that's what we use to read the chemical properties in urine. So the reagents that we use uh, that are um, currently available and mostly found in the shops are mouth sticks. Mouth sticks. So that's what's uh, mostly available, mouth sticks, because it's able to give you um, multiple readings. So the mouth sticks come in this container here. So this container has got uh, a lot of, um, you can say, readings there, plus a lot of colors. So we need to learn how to identify which color is that. Then the strip in the mouth sticks looks like this. So this is a strip. You hold it here, in an impregnated end. That's where that's the end that you hold, not where there are those colors. You don't hold there. Then when you put it here, you find that um, this first line here. The first line containing the colors, as you can see, it even as a line here. So meaning, it's showing you that this is a strip. So this is a strip. So the colors here in the first line are the same colors on the strip. So when you put like this here, you're going to find that these are the same colors in the first line. So these are the ones that you're going to be able to differentiate these other colors when the colors change. For example, if you are reading glucose, which is the first one here, if you are reading it, you'll find that you have to follow through until you find the color to which glucose has changed. So you can only read this when it's dipped in urine. So you need to dip it in urine there. Then after you dip it in urine, there will be color changes. So you have to follow, for example, if you say bilirubin, which is the next one there. So you have to follow until you go to where it has changed to. And that will be your result. And then the result is under here. So if the color changes, for example, for glucose, if it changes to, say, trace there. So the, the reading you're supposed to record is this trace, plus or minus, trace plus or minus. Then you go to, maybe if it changes to 250 here. So the answer you're supposed to record is supposed to be uh, plus here. That's, a, that's the one that you're going to record on your readings. So that's what you do. So then, um, then what about uh, other readings? What do they entail? So you really have to look at the time here. So this one here, glucose, it changes at 45 seconds. So then that after 45 seconds, that's when you should read, after looking at your nurse's watch, you read this after 45 seconds. Same as bilirubin and ketones. And then um, for other readings, for example, if you check out... Uh, blood and uh, potential hydrogen here and protein, urobrinogen, uh, nitrate, nitrites. So you need to get these after 60 seconds. Then leukocytes, you read after 2 minutes. So meaning as you are reading for 45 seconds, you just continue reading there until you finish because uh, by the time you reach to leukocytes, 2 minutes would have elapsed. So... What does it show now? If you find glucose in urine, you may suspect to say this patient has hyperglycemia or this patient is diabetic. So if you find uh, bilirubin in urine, you may suspect that this patient has got a liver problem, which you need also to probe further or investigate. Then you find ketones in urine. You will find that ketones, when they are present, it may either be this patient is starving or this patient has diabetic ketoacidosis. If you find that the specific gravity is high above the readings, which is uh, maybe say uh, 1030, you may find that meaning this patient may be diabetic because the concentration of urine has gone up. And then when you go to blood, you find blood in urine, you may suspect that this patient has got acistosomiasis or this patient is bleeding in the urinary tract. Then if you say potential hydrogen for urine, we can say slightly acidic. 
so it shouldn't uh, be the acidity, the acidity shouldn't be maybe say five or you go to the alkalinity shouldn't be nine somewhere there so you can check shouldn't be somewhere there nine eight this is um, alkaline so urine shouldn't be that side you need to investigate what is causing that urine to go into alkalinity so you need to look out for infections of the urinary tract then you find proteins in urine if it's a child perhaps you may suspect that they have a nephrotic syndrome so you need to investigate as well if you say it's a pregnant mother you need to look out for um, preeclampsia so you need to investigate the mother so it can be preeclampsia for pregnant women if you look out for maybe say children it may be nephrotic syndrome then if you find um, that there is urobilinogen urobilinogen so you need to pronounce this one as well urobilinogen you find it in urine you may suspect that this patient has got a liver problem it has to do with uh, bowel up there in the liver so you need to find out as so you need to investigate what is causing this to be found in urine then you find the nitrite in urine you may suspect that this patient is having a urinary tract infection so you need to find out further as well then what about you find leukocytes in urine Leukocytes in urine, it may show you that this patient may have an infection in the urinary tract or they've got an STI or urinary tract infection. So you need to probe further and investigate more. So these are the chemical properties that are found in urine. So next time we're going to practice the actual procedure so that you know how we combine the physical properties and the chemical properties. So thank you very much for watching. Okay, and subscribe for free.